Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big P here. You know, don't you? You know. Right. Straight in, balls deep, no messing about. Terence Crawford, undefeated Terence Crawford by the way, against Kel Brook, 39 and 2. Is it a good fight at welterweight? Now Kel's been offered the chance to fight Crawford, hasn't he? Now, this is how I look at it. When Kel Brook fought Golovkin, he moved up 13 pound. He then moved, he, got, he then got smashed to bits. One at cheekbones gone. One at other one half gone. He then moved back down 13 pounds. Fought Errol Spence, and they, they finished off his other cheekbone, didn't they? Or eye socket, whatever it were. After that, we were told before the Golovkin fight, we were told Kel Brook's really a middleweight. After that, we're told he's a light middle, 154, but they put him in at 147. We're then told he's a light middle, 154, super welter, whatever you want to call it. We're now hearing reports that Crawford against Kel Brook is close at 147 pounds. So, who in the right mind is making the decisions for Kel Brook? It's a disaster waiting to happen. Who is in Kel Brook's ear hole? Who's in his ear hole telling him he's a 147 fighter? Has anybody ever seen Kel Brook, right? When he's not in camp? Have any boxing fans ever seen him walking about? Hey, because he's a little bit bigger than 10 stone 7. Now, we have weight divisions for a reason. Remember that. Fighters are not superheroes. That's why you don't get Amir Khan fighting Tyson Fury. You're not going to get that because the big 19 stone man doesn't fight the 10 stone 7 man, does he? You're not going to get Carl Frampton against Anthony Joshua, are you? Because one guy's that big and one guy's that big. It won't happen. So why why did they put Kel Brook in with Golovkin and then bounce him back in with Errol Spence straight away? And then why are they talking about this fight here? They're all saying he's a 154 fighter, but they're going to strip him down yet again. And it takes all his advantages away. Kel Brook is probably in the top three at 154 in world boxing. He's easily a top three, top four guy. So why would you put him down at 147 when he hadn't made that weight for ages? He's not looked good since he beat Porter six years ago. More than six years ago. August 2014 he beat Porter. He's not looked good for over six years. He's been up and down weights, 160 pounds, 147, back to 154, down to 150 catch weight, now they're saying 147. Terence Crawford will finish him off, and that will be it, if the fight goes ahead. Personally, I'm not sure if the fight happens, but how, how could Eddie Earns sell that fight to Kel? Well, it's simple, he could say to Kel, I know you're going to not get as many millions as you've had off your other pay-per-view fights, Kel, or whatever, but... If you take this fight and you beat him, you're a superstar. But we heard that before Golovkin. We heard it before Errol Spence. So why would you feed a, somebody that's damaged to, to somebody like Crawford? We saw what he did to, uh, to Amir Khan, didn't we? But I look at it like this, right? If I'm a... If I'm a, a Formula One driver or a, a Le, Mans, Le Mans 24 hour race driver, I'm not going to put... A Ford GT40 on that track hammer that's got a, 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 a squeaky wheel or a, or a nut missing off at one at wheels or brake pad sensor coming on a, on, on a dashboard. I'm not going to go out and race with that problem like that. I'm, I'm going to correct it. But Kel Brook's injuries and, and things like that are no good. For example, we're not going to put a car on a racetrack that's got loads of stuff in boot that makes it heavy are we we're not going to do that or we're not going to take too much stuff out of that car so it lifts up on bends we're going to put the car on the track that's correct Kel Brook isn't correct at 147 he's not a 147 fighter anymore can't do that weight without killing himself takes all his advantages away because technically he's a superstar at 154 in my opinion he could rule at that division but 147's risky, and if he goes in with Terence Crawford, that'll be end of Kelbrook. 
that's my opinion. So all them people that are saying, go on Kel, take that fight, they're all gassing him up and they're all in his ear holes. We had it all with Glofflin, didn't we? Kel's a beast, he's a beast. You want to see shape is in. We saw what happened on night, didn't we? Towel came in, didn't it? So, and then we saw what happened from Spence fight. And he'd have beat Spence, I think, if he had fought Golovkin. So, who's looking out for Kel Brook? Who's watching out for this kid? Who? Is it his trainer? Is it his stepdad? Is it Eddie Hearn? Or have they all got a vested interest in getting a few quid? Because that's what I think it is. If you don't agree, pick up the phone, give me a ring. But you all know I'm telling the truth, don't you? So you're going to see the finisher, Kel Brook. I'm not saying he's going to end up on Skid Row because he's got a few quid, but we are boxing. Kel will, Kel will be stuck, I think, in life. And to go out on a battering from Crawford, he won't want to do that. He'll come out and he'll say, I don't want to go out on a loss. And they keep coming back and back and back. And it's a vicious circle. Kel should be tired now because they're not going to fight Amir Khan. They're not, it's, they've overkilled it and it's lost its sparkle. But he shouldn't be nowhere near Terence Crawford. He shouldn't be in the same arena. He shouldn't be allowed to go and watch Terence Crawford. It will be a bloodbath. A bloodbath. Terence Crawford is a surgeon, right? And Kel Brook is his patient. And if they fight, well... I'm going to put money on Terence Crawford to knock Kel Brook out, alright, at 147. If they fought at 154, Kel will have a better chance of getting to the bell, won't it, end that fight, but it'll be, it'll gut Kel Brook like a fish, and it'll be a shame, but it is what it is, but why can't they just put Kel Brook in with Beefy Smith at 154? I think that's a good pay-per-view for a tenner, Beefy Smith and Kel Brook, why can't they make that fight? So, alright. So peace out, keep on trucking, keep sporting boxing, don't have nightmares.